Hey guys, quick by Chemistry Basics here. Let's talk about DNA and histones. In 1950s, when it was already known that DNA is the genetic material, the research on DNA was at its peak. During DNA isolation, if the DNA is treated with protease, then the DNA obtained is extremely pure. However, if protease treatment is not given, then the DNA obtained will show the presence of protein. So the question is, what all proteins are associated with the DNA? To purify these proteins, the DNA sample was treated with acid and centrifuged. The treatment with acid will cause acid hydrolysis of DNA. As a result, DNA is broken down into monomers of A, T, G and C. The supernatant left after centrifugation will now have all the proteins that were associated with the DNA. When this supernatant is treated with alcohol, the proteins present in the supernatant are precipitated. The proteins obtained after precipitation were dissolved in an appropriate buffer and analyzed by column chromatography. The column chromatography showed purification of three major types of protein. So they were named as H1, H2 and H3. The proteins purified by column chromatography were hydrolyzed and their amino acid analysis was done by paper chromatography. The H2 fraction was rich in lysine, hence it was called lysine-rich histone. The H3 fraction was rich in arginine, hence it was called arginine-rich histone. Further analysis of these proteins was done by SDS page and density gradient centrifugation. The analysis revealed that there are two types of lysine-rich histones, hence they were called H2A and H2B. The analysis also showed that there were two types of arginine-rich histones, hence they were called H3 and H4. If H2A and H2B are incubated together, then they form a dimer, whereas histone H3 and H4 forms a tetramer. Ok, now let's see the experiments done to study the binding of histones with the DNA. When histones binds DNA, the density of overall structure increases. This change in density can be easily detected by density gradient centrifugation. When DNA is incubated with each individual histones, nothing happens. There is no change in the density of DNA. This means individual histones cannot bind DNA. If we mix the dimer H2A and H2B, then again nothing happens. There is no change in the density of DNA. However, when the tetramer of H3 and H4 is mixed with the DNA, the density of DNA increases. This means tetramer of H3 and H4 first binds free DNA. To this mixture, if the dimer of H2A and H2B is added, then the density of complex further increases. Hence we can say that tetramer binding is followed by binding of H2A and H2B. If we study this structure under transmission electron microscope, then it is seen as a beads on string like structure. The beads on string like structure is also called 10 nanometer fiber. And this structure, where the DNA is wrapped around histones, is called the nucleosome. Now, if we treat this structure with DNAs, 
then only the histones remain intact, whereas the DNA is hydrolyzed. If we measure the sedimentation profile of these histones and compare it with the sedimentation profile of dimer and tetramer, then it turns out that this structure is histone octamer. This means the DNA is bound around histone octamer. So the H3H4 tetramer binds 2H2A H2B dimer to form a histone octamer around which the DNA is bound. Now the next question that we can ask is, what is the length of DNA wrapped around histone octamer? For this, if we treat this overall structure with DNAs, then the free DNA gets digested. However, the DNA wrapped around histones remain intact. At this stage, if we give protease treatment, then the histone proteins will be removed. As a result, the DNA that was wrapped around histones is now released. The agarose gel electrophoresis of this DNA shows that the length of this DNA is approximately 147 base pairs. Thus, histone octamer binds 147 base pairs of DNA. Now, while studying histones and DNA under transmission electron microscope, scientists found that addition of salt makes the structure organized. Addition of histone H1 to this makes the overall structure even more organized. And finally, when magnesium ions are added, the structure folds itself into a structure similar to that of chromosome.